everyone, welcome to my channel. I'm Doris. I'm here to share with you about my stock account and today's market updates. Today, my stock account has earned um to seventy thousand and seventy seven point six six dollars. Today, Apple has closed up zero point three, has closed down zero point zero eight percent, and SQQ has closed down three point two seven percent. SPY has closed up 0.95% and United Natural Gas also closed up 6.17%. Today, the market generally performed well. Dow Jones performed closed up 0.87%, Nasdaq closed up 1.26%, and S&P 500 closed up 1.03%. Today, the semiconductors and the auto manufacturers and the other tech industries led with a gain. The U.S. stocks um, are potentially recovering from some of Wednesday's losses. The lower than expected GDP growth in the third quarter and a slight increase in the jobless claims last week reinforced the expectations as an interest rate cut will be potential in the next year. GDP and the labor market data released on Thursday reinforced expectations that the Federal Reserve will cut interest rates by March. According to the Fed Watch tool, the market expects a 85% chance of the Fed rate cut by March, compared to a 79% ahead of the GDP and the labor market data. The U.S. stocks closed slightly higher on Thursday, recovering some of Wednesday's losses. Its plunge followed a winning streak of recent gains following from their closing lows in the late October to Tuesday. Both Dow Jones and S&P 500 were up more than 15%. Over the same period, Nasdaq rose about 19%. Strategists suggested that the market has been rising and it's due to a short-term it's due to a short-term um, expectation reinforcement, and uh, now we are beginning a short-term solidification, solid so consolidation phase. Citigroup strategist says that whilst U.S. stocks are at risk of falling, and as the rally shows weakens, investors should buy on dips. The team, including Scott Cronert, expects continued earnings growth in the low industry level, with rally extending beyond the megatech stocks. Corners had a soft landing and optimism about a rate cut pushed the market into the end of the year. The implication is that we expect the future volatility to come, but the Fed's final policy shift will be a guide. Corners had a soft landing and optimism about a rate cut pushed the market into the end of the year. The implication is that we expect the volatility to come, but the Fed's final policy shift will be a guide. The, his he notes that investors believe that a recession will be averted in 2024, coupled with the fact of high stock valuations, narrow credit spreads, or usually low volatility. Now is not the time to buy into the stocks. On the economic data front on Thursday, the labor market reported that the initial jobless claims for unemployment benefits rose 2,000 to 205,000 in the week ended December 16th, compared with 215,000 and 202,000 last month. Continuing claims for jobless benefits for the week ended December 9th were roughly unchanged from the previous week. Analysts say that the U.S. jobless claims rose less than expected last week and stayed near record lows, suggesting that the labor market remains resilient as companies seek to retain employees. The Commerce Department reports that the final annualized G real GDP growth in the third quarter was revised down to 4.9%, below the expectation of 5.2%, and after a revision of 5.2%, U.S. growth or grew less than expected in the third quarter, pushing bonds higher and sending treasury yields lower. This is all I have for today. Thank you for listening. Don't forget to subscribe and see you next episode.